Britain was on the edge of defeat, her back against the wall. The once proud British expeditionary force had been battered and nearly annihilated at Dunkirk. Above London, the skies thundered with the relentless onslaught of German bombers. In a desperate bid for survival, Britain reached across the Atlantic, requesting aid in the form of any modern aircraft. The United States, with its dormant aircraft industry, could only offer a trickle of support. The British Royal Air Force got their hands on P-40 Warhawks, but it was a drop in the ocean. The world-spanning conflict demanded more, much more. When the Curtis Corporation could not meet the demand for P-40 fighters, Britain's desperate gaze turned to James H. Kindleberger, the leader of a newly born aircraft manufacturer. Kindleberger came up with a wild pitch. He couldn't just deliver those P-40 fighters Britain desperately needed, but he could do one better. He swore he could design a brand new aircraft that would knock anything out of the sky and have it ready in no more than 120 days. Kindleberger was on the edge of berthing the most aerodynamically sleek pursuit plane ever conceived, the P-51 Mustang. Fast, nimble and tough, this bird was set to turn the tide of war. But the Mustang's first flights uncovered a crippling Achilles heel, a defect so severe the United States Army Air Corps washed its hands of it. Relegated to the sidelines, the Mustang was doomed to obscurity, performing escort and recon missions. Yet the saga of the Mustang was far from over, as Destiny still had one card to play. In the wake of Dunkirk's chaotic retreat, Britain stood defiant but nearly alone against the Nazi onslaught. With France falling in June 1940, the skies over Britain soon became the battleground for the Luftwaffe's aggressive push, igniting the Battle of Britain in July. The threat of invasion cast a dark shadow over the nation, severely under-equipped with modern fighters to counter the devastating Blitz. Britain's Royal Air Force found itself dwarfed by the overwhelming might of Germany's upgraded Luftwaffe. In dire need of additional firepower, Britain cast an urgent plea to its resilient ally, the United States, for any available aircraft to bolster its thinning ranks. The United States, ensnared in the delicate balance between neutrality in Europe's conflict and loyalty to Great Britain, faced its own challenges. Its aviation industry, still in a peacetime slumber, was ill-prepared for the monumental task of supplying the volume of warplanes Britain desperately required. In a decisive move, the US authorized the transfer of numerous Curtis P-40 Warhawks, a mainstay in its arsenal, to the United Kingdom. These Warhawks swiftly adapted to European combat standards, outperformed British expectations, and became a pivotal force in their air defense. By 1940, Britain's demand for P-40S surged as the conflict intensified. British leaders engaged Curtis in negotiations for hundreds more fighters, but were met with a production bottleneck. This impasse drove the British to seek alternatives. North American Aviation Corporation, a newcomer yet a proven partner with Britain in designing advanced trainers, entered the picture. Their previous success made the British confident North American Aviation could address their urgent needs. Faced with the challenge, North American Aviation prepared to manufacture the P-40 Warhawks, aligning their production capabilities with Britain's demands. Yet, the prospect of producing another company's design didn't appeal to North American's management. James H. Dutch Kindleberger, the company's president, seized this moment with a visionary proposal. He promised a new fighter to surpass the P-40 in speed, agility, altitude capabilities and range, all at a lower cost. His pitch was compelling, quote, give us a shot and we'll deliver a game changer. Kindleberger's bold commitment was to have a prototype ready in just 120 days, a testament to his ambition and North America's track record with the British. Convinced by Kindleberger's audacity and North America's demonstrated competence, the British agreed to this daring endeavor. Bombs were falling on London, so the 120-day countdown was ticking. North American Aviation plunged into the project with vigor, 
Their goal was to harness the power of the P-40 Warhawk's Allison engine within a cutting-edge airframe. By December 1940, they unveiled the NA-73X prototype, a feat of engineering that arrived under the 120-day deadline with mere days to spare. This aircraft fused the robust Allison engine's force with an advanced aluminum fuselage and, notably, a laminar flow wing design. The innovation minimized air resistance, boosting speed and range, yet it presented challenges at high altitudes and during low-speed maneuvers, presenting a nuanced advantage in the brutal theater of war. An esteemed test pilot, Vance Brees, took the NA-73X skyward, clocking an impressive 382 miles per hour at 15,000 feet on its first flight. Kindleberger's vision had materialized. The aircraft didn't just meet but exceeded expectations, surpassing the P-40's performance and showcasing superior maneuverability. Impressed by the NA-73X's capabilities, the British aptly named it the Mustang, a moniker destined for fame. However, the United States Army Air Corps greeted the Mustang with tepid interest, conducting evaluations on two units now designated as P-51S. Despite the Mustang's proven might, the US military's higher echelons remained unconvinced, reflecting differing tactical priorities and evaluations between the British and American allies amidst the intensifying global strife. The Army Air Corps recognized the Mustang's prowess. Still, they pinpointed a significant flaw. The Allison engine faltered at high altitudes, particularly beyond 17,000 feet, hampered by the lack of a two-speed supercharger. This limitation curtailed the Mustang's potential, relegating it to roles of support, reconnaissance and dive bombing, a stark deviation from its creator's loftier ambitions. Betting they could punch above their weight in a pinch on April 16, 1942, the United States threw down the gauntlet, ordering 500 Mustangs for dive bombing missions, dubbing them the A-36 Apache or Invader. Despite this new nickname, American pilots couldn't shake off the Mustang name, captivated by its raw, gutsy vibe. But even thrown into this fray, the Mustang hit a rough patch. These A-36 invaders marked the Mustang's combat debut in World War II, but the battlefield quickly exposed a critical flaw, its vulnerability during dive bombing. As the Mustang decelerated post-dive, it became an easy mark. Its cooling system was its Achilles heel. A single well-aimed shot at the radiator could down the aircraft, a risk magnified during dive recovery. This vulnerability made the US Army Air Corps reconsider the Mustang's role. Falling short as both a high-altitude fighter and a dependable dive bomber, the aircraft shifted to specialized low-altitude missions, avoiding dive bombing to provide airborne artillery support air support and skip bombing. Despite these challenges, the Allison-powered Mustang demonstrated its strengths and the flexibility of its design. This period underscored the hurdles of wartime aviation development, reflecting the determination and innovation required to meet the dynamic demands of aerial warfare during World War II. In 1943, as US forces entered the treacherous terrain of Burma, Devoid of conventional support avenues, the Mustang emerged as a critical asset. Its ability to provide forward air control and its potent firepower made it indispensable in clearing enemy positions, aiding the progression of American ground forces. The Mustang's agility at low altitudes enabled it to navigate Burma's rugged landscape, supporting infantry before swiftly ascending. Despite initial reservations, the Allison-powered Mustangs earned pilots' respect for their control, reliability, and low-altitude performance. It was precisely one of those pilots who learned the value of the Mustang in the Burmese campaign who first began to ask the right question. Why not equip the Mustang with a more capable engine? The British, recognizing the untapped potential of the Allison-equipped Mustang, proposed a revolutionary upgrade, swapping its engine for a Rolls-Royce Merlin, the powerhouse behind the acclaimed Spitfire. 
This idea took off, with Packard stepping in to adapt the Merlin for the Mustang. The modification unleashed the might of a 1,300 horsepower engine, significantly boosted by an efficient two-stage, two-speed supercharger. Though sharing Allison's 12-cylinder configuration, the Merlin engine outshone it with a superior power-to-weight ratio, better fuel efficiency, and notably, a robust supercharger. North American Aviation quickly modified the Mustang's airframe to house this new engine, setting the stage for a remarkable transformation. This engine swap, coupled with introducing a four-blade propeller and reinforced airframe, notably enhanced the Mustang's high-altitude capabilities. Adjustments to the radiator design bolstered its durability under fire, and the shift from 30mm cannons to .50 caliber Browning machine guns significantly upped its lethal potential. These enhancements morphed the Mustang into an entirely different beast. Far from being just another fighter seeking its place, it ascended to the zenith of World War II aerial combat prowess. With the rollout of the P-51B in November 1942, it flew 30 miles per hour faster than its precursor, boasting a remarkable operational ceiling of 30,000 feet. At this juncture, it dominated adversaries in the air, marking a pivotal shift in the dynamics of aerial warfare. The Mustang, now empowered by the Merlin engine, had established itself as the definitive fighter of the era. Mustang pilots soon discovered an unparalleled advantage exceptional range. Fitted with a 425-gallon fuel tank and an engine twice as efficient as others, the Mustang could reach beyond 1,080 miles. With additional drop tanks, its range soared to 2,600 miles. Boasting a top speed of 440 miles per hour, an accelerated climb rate and deadly firepower, the Merlin-powered Mustang became an unstoppable force above. Its role in escort missions for B-17 bombers across Europe cannot be overstated. What were once treacherous flights resulting in heavy bomber losses turned into safer missions under the Mustang's vigilant escort. Its superior dogfighting skills and remarkable endurance shielded the bombers from Luftwaffe assaults. The US Army Air Corps, recognizing the Mustang's game-changing impact, placed orders for 2,200 P-51B models. By 1943, these Mustangs were arriving in droves, decisively shifting the war's momentum. Their introduction marked a significant decrease in bomber losses, thanks to the Mustangs' protective prowess and extended reach. Beyond their escort duties, these fighters excelled in ground attack missions post-bombing raids, striking German assets with precision. The Merlin-powered Mustangs significantly undermined Germany's fuel and aircraft production capabilities, a blow from which the Luftwaffe could not recover. With the Luftwaffe's diminished presence, Allied bombers flew with greater assurance, guarded by what they warmly referred to as their little friends. By the end of 1943, Mustang production was ramping up, and soon this rising star of a fighter was present in every war theater, operated by almost all Allied forces. But it could still be improved. The P-51B Mustang, already a legend in the skies, was not immune to critique. RAF pilots pinpointed two key areas for improvement. The canopy's design limited rearward visibility, and the aircraft's guns were prone to jamming after executing certain high-intensity maneuvers, a flaw that could critically hamper its combat effectiveness. Heeding these insights, North American Aviation embarked on an ambitious upgrade of this battle-proven fighter. The culmination of their efforts was the P-51D, a refined version boasting significant enhancements. Its most notable feature was a new teardrop-shaped canopy, offering pilots a panoramic 360-degree view, a crucial advantage in the frenzied ballet of dogfighting. However, this canopy alteration introduced some stability challenges. To counteract these, a dorsal fin was added to the tail, providing the additional aerodynamic control needed. The wings were also redesigned, accommodating 3.50 caliber Browning machine guns on each side. This increase to six guns, coupled with their repositioning, effectively resolved the jamming issue. 
The P-51D had evolved into the undisputed ultimate fighter of World War II. It soon became the standard bearer across all fronts, its prowess and adaptability unmatched. In 1944, North American aviation was charged with an immense production task, over 8,000 P-51Ds. These new Mustangs swarmed the skies over Germany, escorting the massive Allied bomber fleets and engaging in ground attacks. Their unmatched combination of agility, range and firepower left other piston-powered aircraft trailing in their wake during dogfights. The P-51D's superiority was so pronounced that it became the gold standard against which other fighters were measured. A defining moment for the P-51D came on March 4, 1944. It was on this day that the Mustang completed its maiden one, 100-mile journey to Berlin, escorting a vast armada of bombers. This mission signaled the beginning of the end for the Third Reich's reign of terror, as the Mustangs, with their superior capabilities, ensured the success of one of the most critical air raids of the war. The Allies now had in their possession what was arguably the most capable and responsive fighter of the war. It was now up to their pilots to wield it to bring down the Nazi regime. Major George Preddy emerged as the top ace, flying the P-51 Mustang during the war, pushing the aircraft to its full capacity. After enduring a grueling 200-hour combat tour and voluntarily extending his service twice, Preddy chose to stay in the fight, volunteering for an unheard-of third extension. In the fierce 1944 summer engagements over northern France, Preddy shot down nine enemy aircraft from June 12th to August 5th. Yet his most extraordinary feat was on the horizon. On August 5th, after a day of aerial combat, Preddy joined the 352nd Fighter Group's War Bond Drive celebration. Despite a forecast of thunderstorms that suggested a pause in operations the next day, the weather unexpectedly cleared overnight. Shortly after Preddy had gone to sleep, he was awakened with urgent news. A bombing raid over Berlin was imminent, and he was to lead the mission. Still intoxicated from the previous night's festivities, he accidentally fell off the podium during the mission briefing. His squadron took immediate action to sober him up, using oxygen masks to sharpen his focus and cold water splashes to fully wake him. After regaining his composure, Preddy was escorted to his P-51 Mustang. Despite his rough start, Preddy's skill as a pilot shone the moment he was in the cockpit. His deep bond with the aircraft allowed him to lead his squadron flawlessly towards Berlin. The weather was clear, providing perfect visibility for the mission that lay ahead, and the German Luftwaffe was out in force, setting the stage for an intense confrontation. As the American B-17 bombers neared their objective, they were ambushed by a formation of 30 German Messerschmitt BF-109S. Hidden from German eyes, Major George Preddy and his squadron of P-51 Mustangs were poised for a counterattack. The Mustangs, celebrated for their speed and agility, were perfect for such sudden strikes. Preddy's initial attack downed a BF-109, sending it plummeting to the ground, its pilot unseen. He quickly targeted another BF-109, its left-wing route exploding into flames, forcing the pilot to bail out. Preddy's team systematically took apart the German assault. Due to the initial focus of the Messerschmitts on the bombers, they were oblivious to the Mustangs slicing through their formation. Preddy quickly accounted for two more BF-109S, leaving the remaining German pilots in disarray. Attempting escape, they dived towards safety, but the Mustangs, led by Preddy, showed no mercy. Preddy claimed his fifth victory in this dogfight, and soon after engaged with another BF-109 at just 5,000 feet, the Germans' attempt to evade was futile against Preddy's swift maneuvers and the Mustang's superior speed and firepower. Outflanking his adversary, Preddy fired, forcing another German pilot to eject. Back at Bodney, Preddy stepped out of his Mustang, Kripes a mighty two, a changed man, visibly affected by the day's events. Combat photographer First Lieutenant George Arnold captured this poignant moment of Preddy, pale and worn, leaving his cockpit. Despite his achievements, Preddy chose not to report his victories, 
letting his squadron and gun camera footage speak to his actions. The media, drawn by Major George Preddy Jr.'s exploits, celebrated him across Allied Europe, though he remained uneasy with the attention. Lieutenant Colonel John C. Meyer, recognizing Preddy's extraordinary feat, recommended him for the Medal of Honor, but on August 12th, Brigadier General Edward H. Anderson awarded him the Distinguished Flying Cross instead. It was pilots like Preddy and thousands of other brave men who took the P-51 Mustang from a marvel of American engineering to one of the most legendary warbirds of warfare history. Throughout World War II, Mustangs soared as one of the sky's most powerful forces, executing over 213,000 missions. Their combat achievements were staggering, downing 5,000 German aircraft in air battles and destroying another 4,000 on the ground, accounting for half of all American air victories post their deployment. The Mustang's combat effectiveness was unparalleled. Incurring around 2,500 losses due to combat, mechanical failures or pilot errors, its success-to-loss ratio underscored not only the aircraft's superior design and capabilities, but also the valor and adeptness of its pilots. As the Third Reich's grip weakened, Germany turned to its advanced jet and rocket-powered fighters, hoping to counter the Mustang's supremacy. These faster aircraft marked a significant advancement in aviation technology, yet they fell short in endurance and agility compared to the Mustangs. The war's toll on Germany's industrial capabilities meant these revolutionary fighters were too scarce to alter the course of the air war significantly. Mustang pilots leveraged their numerical strength and strategic prowess to neutralize the German jets, targeting them during their takeoff and landing phases and overpowering them in dogfights through superior tactics and numbers. The introduction of jet-powered aircraft though a leap forward could not stem the tide against the relentless assault by America's premier World War II fighter. Hermann Göring, the commander of the Luftwaffe and a top Nazi henchman, couldn't hide the stark reality when he saw P-51 Mustangs tearing through the skies over Berlin. His own words lay bare the brutal truth. Quote, The day I saw Mustangs over Berlin, I knew the jig was up. 